Hi guys, welcome to CYC. My name's Nathan Hayes, and today we're clearly doing something a bit different. Today I want to talk about autism. Now this has nothing to do with chaos and has nothing to do with not dying before you die and that whole message we're trying to go for on this channel. But I work with autism and this is World Autism Month. And I feel from the discussion on autism, there is something missing. I feel as if there's a lack of kind of compassion or there's a lack of first person narration. There's a lack of that kind of, that voice. When you think of any other mental illness, if it's bipolar or schizophrenia or whatever it is, you can kind of put yourself in their shoes. You can say, I can imagine, you might know, you might not understand fully how extreme the feelings or the situation might be, but you can kind of imagine how difficult it might be. I feel as if we don't get that with autism. I feel as if we always remain the onlooker. You think of, maybe you think of the carer or the people around them, but you find it very difficult to put yourself in their shoes of the person that's rocking back and forth, or that's not very social or whatever it is because autism is a spectrum so there's a lot of different ways it does display but whatever way you're thinking of or whatever your kind of stereotype for it is I think most people find it very difficult to put themselves in that mindset and I want to do a small little exercise with you today just to see if we can get you into that mindset or get you to kind of understand some part of it there's one part in particular I really want to try and get across but if I can get you to understand a little bit and hopefully just increase compassion, awareness and just empathy for autism. The first time I heard a first person perspective on autism was on a TED talk. And I'm gonna leave a link for that video in the description down below if you do wanna check it out. But my main takeaway from the video was that she said, if you ask a child to draw a church, they will give you a rough estimate. They'll give you a box with a steeple and a cross on top. If you ask an autistic child to draw a church, they will likely draw their local church or some building that they have seen or interacted with that they have labeled as a church. Now she had autism and this was her understanding of her condition, but she described it in those terms that she didn't quite have the ability to abstract out, to generalize, to have that list of six or seven things that makes church and use that to understand new buildings. So we understand that maybe stone walls, big doors, stained glass windows, um, steeple, cross, graveyard around it. That's a rough blueprint for what makes a church. And when we come across a new building that has some of those, we can understand whether or whether, whether it's a church or not. She felt as if she didn't have that ability, that when she came across a new building, she had to learn it from scratch. Now, again, that won't speak to everyone perhaps, because autism is a spectrum, so you know, each case is different but that really like that that example has stuck with me her story stuck with me and it's really helped me understand be far more patient with autism so again so I deal with the more kind of severe side of autism perhaps I see it just more frequently but maybe next time you come across someone that has autism that's maybe partic like particular about how they have their kitchen or their sitting room Maybe you can kind of use this to understand that situation. That they're not just being mean and not letting you move stuff around or they're not being really controlling. That they're just trying to fight against this inability to abstract. So when, like, if you go into their sitting room and you move stuff around, the reason that they have anxiety about it is because when they come back into the sitting room, th what they see no longer matches the picture, like their mental picture of the room. So they're like in their flow, they're in their routine, they're coming into the sitting room to sit down, maybe have some tea or something like that. And they come in and they see not their sitting room. Like maybe all the pieces are there, but they're not in the way they're meant to be. Therefore, it's not the sitting room. Because in, my, in their sitting room, this is the way the chairs are. This is the way this is, whatever it is. And maybe that's, if you can understand on that level, whether it's correct or not, it might make you a bit more patient. Maybe, maybe a bit more compassionate more understanding but I found it really useful so I want I want you to try and hold on to that kind of understanding or that mindset as we go through this exercise next with all that said I now want you to focus on your breathing I want you to breathe in feel your chest expand and breathe out I want you to feel the air roll against your skin I want you to feel how your feet feel in your shoes or on the floor I just want you to be in your body 
at this moment, at this time. In whatever room, whatever house, whatever town. And if you can, I want you to imagine what it'd be like to just wake up. And you go down the steps, as you always do, into your kitchen. And you have breakfast with, let's say, your mum. And you're sitting down at the table having breakfast with your mom and you look around the room. Now you can base this off your actual kitchen or you can base it off whatever, but I want you to picture where the fridge is, where the sink is, what color the floor is, what color the chairs you're sitting on, everything. I really want you to have like a detailed image of this kitchen. Now you go back up the stairs and you go have a shower. This is your routine every day you're very calm, you're very happy. You're gonna go on a trip, you're gonna go on a spit for a spin in the car, no problem. So you go back down the steps, you're gonna have some tea with your mom before you go. So you go back into the kitchen, but now it's not your kitchen. Now it's your sitting room. And that doesn't make sense. Where's your kitchen gone to? It was here just two moments ago. Where's your mom? What's happening? Like, you can't go on your trip anymore, because like, where's the kitchen? You need the tea, you need to get stuff. Like, Where's your mom? Like, what's going on? You don't really understand. The kitchen was just here two moments ago. You start to feel panicked. You start to feel anxious. You start to kind of get that kind of shallow breath, that fast heart rate, that just kind of desperate sort of anxiety where you, just, you don't quite know what to do. Now your mom appears behind you. But what's she doing here? She's meant to be in the kitchen too. Where, like, where's the kitchen? What's going on? She tells you it's okay to calm down, that you can get your jacket, you go for a spin in the car, go for a drive, go for a little trip. Now at another time, you'd understand that all those words, trip, drive, journey, whatever, they all go together and you'd understand it. But at the moment, you're, you're kind of frantic, you're panicked, you're, you're, you have that shallow breath and you just can't understand. It, it's, you don't really have the space to kind of process it. And you're still panicked and you don't know what to do and you don't know what's going on. And now you're kind of rocking back and forth just to try and calm down. You t it, where's the kitchen? I just want the kitchen. That's all I want, just the kitchen. Where's the bloody kitchen? And you just don't understand and your mom's trying to calm you down, but it's not helping, and that's just not it. Where's the kitchen? Where's the house that I know? Where am I at this moment? You really start to panic. You really start to breathe heavy. You're starting to get really anxious. Now, luckily, your mom's really good, and she's seen this before, and this has happened before, and she grabs you by the shoulders, and she takes you out of the sitting room and she brings you to the next door. Turns out you've just gone in the wrong door. And she sits you down at the table and she puts some tea in front of you. And you're still panicked, and you're still kind of rocking back and forth. But you've tea in your hand now, and now your mom's up doing the dishes and getting ready for the trip. That makes sense. So we're going for a trip. Okay, I have my tea. Mom's here, I'm in the kitchen. Okay. She tells you to go get your jacket, that you're going to go for a little bit of a spin. And when you finish your tea, you go get the jacket. And you go have the rest of your day. You're back on routine. You're fine. Happy out. Now, I don't know if you're able to get into that headspace, but regardless, that is not a representation of everybody with autism. Autism is a spectrum and there's a lot of variety within it. This is simply my crude attempt at trying to convey a certain part of autism that I kind of face, I work and stuff. Uh, again, I work with more severe cases, so maybe I'm biased, but this perspective has really helped me like be more understanding and just be a bit more patient with people with autism. Um, just understanding that regardless of how close you are, whether it's a mom or family or whatever, sometimes it's just not personal. Sometimes they're dealing with a question that's bigger than you. They're dealing with the question of what's going on? Where am I? Like. I'm lost, I, I don't know, and it's that kind of frantic panic. And that just, it's a bigger question than you and who you are sometimes. So, that's helped me. I don't know if it will help you, but I really hope it does. 
um, you know. So guys, that's it for me today. It was really nice to film outside. Don't always get a lot of sun, so why not do that in the sun, like, you know, while we're doing stuff differently. Uh, leave a comment down below as always. I do love hearing from you. And thanks for watching. I will see you next week. Bye, guys.